Welcome everyone to our Thursday lunch. As you all know by now, the last Thursday, we have a partnership with the Key Biscayne Community Foundation and the Citizen uh, Scientist Program. And they're gonna be providing amazing speakers and just wonderful opportunities for us to get to know our planet and how we can help our struggling environment. I'm gonna turn the mic over to Ramya and she's going to introduce our wonderful speaker today. Thank you, Roxy. Um, hi, everybody. Um, for those of you who uh, were here last month or have seen me from other uh, citizen science lectures, uh, my name is Ramya. I'm the Director of Environmental Science at the Key Biscayne Community Foundation. Um, for those of you that haven't seen me before, I gave the lecture last month about sea turtles. Um, thank you. Uh, this week, um, we have Justin Mayhew with us, who is the uh, founder and CEO, is that right, of Kopu Water. Um, he's going to talk to you today about sustainable packaging and what his company is doing to uh, help with the, the sort of problems that we have with packaging. Um, obviously, many of you know single-use plastic is a huge problem for us, that we constantly are having beach cleanups. There's never a shortage of trash on the coastlines to pick up. Um, and that is something that we are always working on and always looking at new innovative ways to avoid that problem. Um, so with that, I won't go on and on about it because he's here to talk about it. So um, I'll hand it over to you, Justin. Thank you, Roman. Really appreciate um, you inviting me here uh, and uh, all of you coming here to listen uh, to me today. Appreciate that. My name is Justin Mahi and I am the founder and CEO of Copa Water. Uh, my other half, uh, also founder of Copa Water, is my wife here, Mindy. And uh, my daughter is uh, Charlize here as well. We have two other boys as well. We moved here to Key Biscayne in July of last year, and uh, we are absolutely loving it. Really appreciate the the tropical island paradise that, uh, that is right here. So let me tell you about Kopu. So Kopu is a modern American luxury bottled water brand and sustainability solution. The water is sourced from the Cascades of Oregon. It is an award-winning taste, uh, exceptionally smooth. Uh, the still water has got a pH of 8.0. The sparkling has got tiny, fine champagne-like bubbles that are incredible. We package exclusively in sleek aluminum bottles, and there is a reason for why we do that. So with that, I'd like to kind of start with a question for the audience. Who here, please raise your hands, who here recycles keep your hands up please who here puts glass bottles into the recycling who here believes that those glass bottles actually get recycled so the fact is is that not a single glass bottle that has ever been put into the recycling in the state of Florida has ever been recycled. And so I wanted to bring that up today. I'd like to discuss why that is the case and what is the solution. On happier times, this is an incredible place that we live. You know, from the, the flora and the fauna, uh, the beaches, the Everglades, I mean, it is just extraordinary. And we are so thankful for being here. Um, but the fact is, is that we have, we have trouble in paradise. So there are 75 landfill locations in the state of Florida. And in South Florida, there are 32. And, you know, We've all driven along the 95, you know, you see these big mountains and then you sort of head more inland, there's more big mountains. When we were kids, were those mountains there? So, and our grandchildren, 
do we either want double the amount of mountains or do we want them to be twice as high? That is the problem that is going on right now because the more we consume, the more that is not saved from the landfills, there is no choice but to keep building more landfills or build them even higher. So this is a personal story. So we love adventures with our family. We have to because we've got a seven, a, almost seven-year-old boy, a five-year-old boy, a two-year-old daughter, and they're insane. So <laughs> we've got to go on weekend adventures. And so we head out to, down to the Biscayne National Park, to Cutler Bay. Um, up north, we went to the, uh, the Safari Park last weekend, which is amazing. And uh, about three months ago, we went to a marina down in Cutler Bay, and there was this big mountain behind us. And we looked back, and there were these swirling seagulls like all over the place. And I was like, oh my god, there is an enormous landfill mountain right on the coast here in this beautiful environment. Then a little bit later, we went down to Homestead. And have you guys been to the Biscayne National Park down in Homestead? Absolutely beautiful. If you take a boat out and you look backwards, it looks like there are snow-capped mountains range there. And it's like another, so another massive trash mountain right next to the Biscayne National Park. And so we were like, this is crazy. So we flew a drone over there, and we've got video footage of this. So there is like canals, right? So when it rains, the water comes off the trash, goes into the canals, and then flows out into the Biscayne National Park. So it's a serious, serious problem. It's a serious problem from a visual perspective, but also there are other problems with landfills. So these mountains of trash, you can never build on them. So they're belching methane, which is a terrible greenhouse gas. Sometimes they combust, so, they, you know, so there's fires at these things. And then also it obviously contaminates all of the local soil, and if water is coming out and then draining into the bay, it's contaminating the bay as well. So is there a question? Yeah, I don't know what the technical term is, but yeah, but basically it's poisoning our environment. And we may not see it in our lifetime, the poisoning, but it's coming. And so we have an ability to do something about that. So What's the good news? What is not going into the landfill? 75% of all aluminum ever created in the history of mankind is still in use today. It's extraordinary. Consumer beverage cans, it's a little lower. Now these are national st statistics. Glass bottles, where it is recycled, 34% recycling rate. As I said before, not a single glass bottle in the state of Florida has ever been recycled. So this number here for glass bottles for here is zero. Glass is worth less than zero. No one wants it. So no one's gonna build a recycling plant in the state of Florida unless you increase your taxes and you pay more. And you'll see that in Europe, right? They have multi-stream recycling, but they pay much, much higher taxes. That glass, glass takes about a million years to biodegrade. So it will basically always be in there for, you know, for the rest of humanity. It's significantly heavier than aluminum and plastic. So another reason why it's not recycled is it's so heavy to move. You know, you also, when you recycle, it must be sorted by color. So you can't recycle green glass with clear glass, with brown glass, with blue glass. It's a very, very difficult process to recycle. And if it breaks, you know, it's never going to be recycled. It's just too dangerous, you know, to handle. So Florida is not alone. Only 10 states in America 
recycled glass. So if you have a look at it, at your, the question was, which ones? So if you go to the back of a glass bottle, it'll say the, the redemption rates. Those will be, so it's basically a tax. Those will be the states that, um, that recycle glass. So what if the glass is recycled? So this is another reason why glass is not recycled, is that it's highly pollutive when you're actually recycling. You know, the emissions coming out range from carbon dioxide to sulfur dioxide. There are nitrates, there's particulate matter, like, you know, what comes out of the back of your, you know, internal combustion car. It's, it's, it's very, very pollutive. And the furnaces, these are furnaces that you can't turn off. They, for the life of the furnace, it needs to be hot and, and working. So it's a tremendous amount of energy that, that gets used for it. Um, and there's just, there's just multiple problems with recycling glass, which is why you know, it almost doesn't happen. So how does that compare with aluminum? And this is why we as a company, as in part of our mission, decided to go for aluminum packaging. So as I said before, 75% of all aluminum ever created in the history of mankind is still in use today. And part of the reason is because aluminum is valuable. So aluminum, commodity aluminum, sells for $2,400 a ton, where uh, aluminum cans sell for about $1,200 $1,200 a ton. By contrast, glass has got a value of, well, negative $20 a ton. So that's why, one of the key reasons why glass doesn't get recycled is because it's, it's worth less than zero. In my building, we have a container on each floor for glass, a container for aluminum and plastic. What do you think? Are they that ignorant? What do they do with that glass? Put it with the garbage? They, they know what they're doing. Yes, it goes into the garbage. It goes in the garbage. Well, question. It's called greenwashing. It makes you feel good about recycling glass. So it's a fraud, the whole thing. It's a fraud, yeah. So aluminum, packet, aluminum packaging has got a liner in it. So whatever you put into aluminum packaging doesn't actually touch the aluminum. So, you know, and that doesn't impact the recycling process uh, as well. So the only things that, you know, um, that you would want to be careful about with putting into aluminum are things that eat away at that liner. So things that are highly, highly acidic. But Coca-Cola's got a P like a really, really negative pH. Uh, but you know the line is good enough easily to handle Coca-Cola, which has got tons of carbonic acid in it. So um, also aluminum bottles are light. So they're 80% lighter than equivalent size glass bottles. And so that you know, it's, you know, less carbon emissions, right, for moving, you know, the uh, that packaging around the country. And aluminum is it, it's an element, so you know, it's just you just melt it down. There's no mixing of things that have to happen. It's an element, so it's infinitely recyclable. <laughs> That's a good question. So, you know, our primary competitor is Nestle. And Nestle produces San Pellegrino and Aquapana. So the cost of their bottles to them is probably about 20 cents. The cost of our bottles, our aluminum bottles, is more like 80 cents. So, you know, our cost of packaging is considerably higher, but not a single, and I'll go into this a little bit, but not a single one of our we have, a, we have a stewardship program, which I'll go into, but that is the cost of sustainability. If we don't want to have these mountains double the mountains or double the height of the mountains, 
then you know we're going to have to invest in making sure that that happens yes okay so i just got here i haven't heard a lot so sorry if i'm stepping on something you already talked about but i know that aluminum foil is not very good for me you know to cook in so i use paper uh what's it called uh, parchment parchment paper because it doesn't release as many toxins now i'm thinking aluminum sometimes in those storage houses where they're about to send the cans over they've been sitting in the sun for i don't know how long and i don't know what's leaking into my drink that's a really good question you know because back in the 60s you know, there was concern that aluminum was bad for you and, you know, it was related to Alzheimer's. So what, you know, I, I can tell you, but what I would just Google, you know, is aluminum bad for you? Go to the Alzheimer's Association website under the, I mean, it's under the myths tab. There's no problem with aluminum. And there's, there's a lot of like the, it's funny because, you know, this is part of our business and we did like two years of diligence to make sure that we were not part of the problem. And so we did a tremendous amount of work and making absolutely sure that what we had was a luxury, not just for the planet, but also for people as well. And so I would definitely encourage going to, you know, Alzheimer's Association to all of these, um, you know, uh, third-party, uh, objective sources of information. So if you have done some tests or know of some tests where the metal does not leak into the... Oh, yeah. We, it, all of our bottles, absolutely. Like, health and safety is number one for us. And to your point about aluminum, right in this room, most of us grew up having your mother boil water in aluminum pots and then there came a time where my god get rid of those aluminum pots you're going to die but we are living proof that isn't so and who doesn't like drinking beer out of a beer can i mean yeah sorry um what's the process of reusing them so if people start using these you know and you reuse them I guess for me, ultimately, thinking of the environment, it's the reusing of things. Are, are the sheer number of people in the world that buy a bottle of whatever, glass, plastic, aluminum, yeah, and we just, single use. It, it's single use. It's really about, and obviously your, your cost is not on the recycling, because your recycling is much cheaper and safer, better for the yeah. environment. But in, in that spirit, is there a way that people could, or, or let's say the community. If we did something here in the community centers, could these be washed and brought back and used again? Um, so, you know, what we've done is we've designed a product for single use, and, and we make, and I'll go into this a little bit, we make sure that, um, that kind of effectively over about 60 days, it is reused. And I'll go into that a little bit. But that being said, we have no problem with people you know, having a kopu, enjoying it, and then, you know, filling it up at a, at a water dispenser for purified water. You know, absolutely, we see people reusing it, and we have no problem with that. It's funny because um, sometimes when we're back in California and driving through Venice, you'll see some of the homeless people, and they've got their bottle of kopu, and I'm like, interesting. But, you know, it's, uh, we have no problem with people reusing it at all. Um, so the other thing is, is uh, you know, not only is it infinitely re re recyclable, the process, it's an element, so you just heat it up and it melts down. There's no need to sort of turn it into compounds and in the uh, polluting process that happens. And importantly, you know, in terms of energy consumption, when you're uh, recycling, you save 97% of the energy that is used when you're creating virgin aluminum from bauxite. So for us, our bottles are made in America, they're made in Youngstown, Ohio, and they contain 85% recycled aluminum. You know, you hear a lot about the word recyclable. Recyclable is a term that is meaningless. 
unless it is recycled. And so, you know, what we have done is we have created a business that functions on the concept of ensuring recycling. And so here in our community, our clients include the Ritz-Carlton, uh, Kazumi, uh, the Yacht Club, um, you know, and, and others. And so we have a, what we call a stewardship program. Back in the 50s, this was really normal. When they, you know, I wasn't around, but you deliver glass bottles of Coca-Cola, you deliver glass bottles of milk, you put them in crates, and then they're taken back and they're reused. That, that is not only needs to happen again, it will happen again because we can't live in, the, in this trash epidemic. So we have a way of doing something that is very similar because aluminum is a sustainability wonder material. So when we, when Copa Water delivers pallets, deli delivers cases of Copa to clients, in our vehicles, we have an expandable bag and we provide all of our clients with containers so they don't have to invest in this at all and this is free for them. So we have Kopu aluminum stewardship drums, small ones behind bars and larger ones to go behind outlets. So if you visit the Ritz, you can't see them, but when the servers are clearing the bottles of Kopu from Lightkeepers or from Dune or from Cantina, you know, or from the Yacht Club, we, they put these containers back of house and they, all of the servers are putting in the, the empty Kopu bottles, but not just the Kopu bottles. They're putting in all the beer cans, they're putting in the, the cans of Coca-Cola, Pepsi cans, and so our vehicle, when they drop off the cases of Kopu, are then pouring this empty aluminum into the back of the vehicle, and at the end of the day, the vehicle goes to a company called All Flora Scrap Metal that we have partnered with, and then pours out, they buy that aluminum for us, which pays for the route change. And there are buyers from Alcoa and all of the big metal companies going around there buying it every day. So we've just done something pretty simple. We've connected the loop between dining and hospitality locations that are selling bottled water with the scrapyards that are taking it and then selling it to the producers of aluminum. So you, you ask about reusing. We are reusing because, next slide, 60 days later, on average, that bottle of Kopu, so these Kopu bottles here, you will see them driving around as Tesla cars, the chassis, they could be, you know, your favorite, um, you, know, you know, Miller Lite can of beer, uh, or it could be your MacBook computer. It comes in and out, in and out, every 60 days. And that is Copa Water. That's what we do. So what comes to mind right now is, I love that, that it's a loop, and I love all the things you're doing, and I, I wonder why, let, let's just, I didn't get one of the waters, but let's just say that this water it's is really so good. pretty. What if it just said, it was a little bigger, maybe, and it said Ritz-Carlton, and then it had Copa on the bottom, and then Ritz-Carlton people spend the whole week going to a filtration water area with your beautiful bottling that could be personalized to the hotel. So it's giving advertising to the hotel, it's giving advertising to you, but then you wouldn't have 200 bottles, you would just have, you know, 50 bottles. That, that, that's another really good question, which is, which, so this, so you can split that in two. So firstly, um, you know, when you go, when you go out to dinner and you're having that special experience, right, you're looking for quality. You're looking for, you know, rich ingredients. You're looking for, you're looking for amazing flavors. And you're also looking for really delicious, exceptionally smooth water. And so that's what this spring is that we have from Oregon. 
is we've got this amazing natural spring that's rich in calcium, magnesium, silica, which is a building block of collagen, right? So in that kind of environment, it's zero waste. And in terms of like emissions, we do not believe in transporting water from all from around the world. We don't believe at all in bringing water in from Italy and France. And when we do, you know, expand into Italy and France, it's not going to say Oregon water. It'll say water from the French Alps. It'll be water from, from you know, the the closest local region for natural spring water. That's the first part. It's like it, it's about quality. The second part of what you point out, which is really good, and I believe that's the future for complementary water in hospitality. So, you know, and we see this, and I've spoken to, you know, global heads of, of branding and food and beverage at some of the biggest hospitality companies in the world. We're, we're moving towards, a, you know, purification systems at, at the hotels, and you know you can buy a permanent water bottle, or you can you know use your Kofu bottle, right? And you can fill that up, right, at one of those water dispensers. It's not going to be exceptionally smooth in taste. It's not going to be spring water. It's not going to have all the minerals. But for that kind of thing, when it's the complementary water, it's just about hydration. And so for that kind of of water drinking experience, for sure, that's the future. Now you go into the store and you want bottled water, spring water, purified water. For spring water, how many other locations can you tell us about in this country that competes with the Oregon Spring? Can you? Yeah. So you, you're talking about other bottled water brands in aluminum? Correct. No. no. Oh. In flash glass. Okay. So our, you know, so so firstly, where 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 Copa was focused is dining and hospitality. So I'll, I'll get another brand, but there's only three brands. There is San Pellegrino and Aquapana, which is owned by Nestle, which is a big Swiss conglomerate. And don't get me started. <laughs> um, yeah, just Google Nestle and environmental practices. And then the other one is, is Evian, which is from France. Yeah. And so those are, the, those are the three brands that Kopu is looking to be a modern American sustainable alternative. There are other brands out there where you know, um, you'll see within uh, Winn-Dixie and Golden Hog, um, you know, there's the, the, the Coke-owned brands, the Pepsi-owned brands. Um, there's, a, there's a few smaller ones as well. Now, your water in an aluminum can could sit outside for five or ten minutes, and it's okay? Because yeah. Because the plastic, you're not supposed to have sun exposure because it's not supposed to be good. Shall yeah, in plastic... Uh, those plastic bottles, you know when you squeeze them and they're like soft, right? Yes. But then if you leave it outside for a few days, it becomes hard and like crunchy. What happens is within that plastic, there's what's called phthalates. And the phthalates, through sunlight, leach into the water. And the phthalates, is, just Google it, it's, that's not good for you at all. Really bad for you. And not just good for you personally, terrible for the future of humanity. May I ask a question about bottled water in these plastic bottles? You know, we all store up water for hurricanes and so on. And if we've got water left from last year in the case, should we use it the next year or should we dump it? <laughs> because I know how much. I would dump it, but. <laughs> My question is. I mean, you know, if there's a hurricane coming, you need water, you yeah. probably should drink it. You know, but at the same time, it's, it's not. No, it, it, the, the plastic is, is leaching into the water, the phthalates. Yeah. Any other. Oh.
go, can you just put the cans into a regular recycling and they'll recycle them at the regular place? So um, we we have a uh, we actually do have a home subscription business where we deliver to homes in Key Biscayne. Um, and if you're interested, you know, let us know. Uh, if you put aluminum into the recycling bin here, honestly, I can't guarantee it, but you've got a much better chance of at least some of it being recycled because they have these conveyor belts at the waste management companies that have magnets. And so they, it goes through these shredding machines and they shred up all the material and they do try to get some of the aluminum dust and metal dust from there. It's not particularly efficient. It's not anything close to our stewardship program, but it's better than it all going to the landfill. The whole concept of who originated New Zealand by any chance? So I'm, a, I'm a Kiwi. I am from New Zealand. And uh, so Kopu means Venus, the morning star uh, in Māori, which, which is the native language uh, of New Zealand. And uh, yeah, it's just, it just came, up, it was, came across, you know, an inspiration just in my head. I'm like, Kopu, sound great. And then I looked it up, didn't mean anything offensive in any other languages, and uh, looked it up and it, it, it meant Venus, the morning star in, in Maori, which was just amazing. So that, that's what it means. Yeah. I, I visited your beautiful country. You, you guys are all into kopu things, you know, yeah. the principle of no preservatives in anything. So, uh, yeah, and there's actually, it's amazing how and the bottom of New Zealand is one of the largest aluminum smelters in the world down there. Which is which is incredible. All you know, they mine the bauxite in Australia, ship it to New Zealand. There's huge amounts of renewable energy in New Zealand because of all the dams and the water coming down. So it's it's a much it's it's a great place to refine aluminum. I, I live in Massachusetts predominantly. I buy Poland Spring water. What's the difference between Poland Spring? Oh, it says it comes from a natural spring compared to your water from. Um, firstly, are you buying it in glass or in plastic? Because that, that's the first difference. It's plastic, it's how it comes. Okay. Um, the other, so as well as the packaging, um, I don't know what the, off, 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 my, off the top of my, I know what the di difference is in minerality, um, but uh, I know that Kopu has got, is award-winning taste, for one. Uh, and then additionally, it's very rich in naturally occurring silica, um, which is a building block of collagen, calcium, magnesium, um, potassium, all the kind of nutrients that you need to, you know, to nourish your body. But I, I don't know offhand what the mineral count is like for pollen spring. At the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned landfill. I have traveled back and forth twice a year from Key Biscayne to New Jersey. When I first started 20 years ago, out of ignorance, I would pass and say, I never remember seeing that hill, this little hill. Well, through the years, 20 years, those hills have grown and grown into, which I only the last 10 years realized, it's landfill. Mm -hmm. Do we look forward to a Mount Everest? Does yeah. <laughs> yeah. The they, they try to disguise them with growing grass yeah. on the side, yeah. right? Yeah. But we all know what it is. You go to Bill Bags, you go to the very you know southern tip of Bill Bags and look at Stiltsville. You'll see a mountain range from here we are in Key Biscayne. That mountain range is trash. And as I said, you go down to Homestead, you take a boat out, you look back, you're like, what are these snow cap? I've got it on my phone. It's just like unreal. So there is, you know, we can all be agents of change here. It's becoming more and more obvious. 
Firstly, it's our own habits, right, of, of how we consume. Uh, and then the next part is starting the conversation and lobbying. When you say there are certain elements in a plastic bottle that actually get bigger and come out in the sun and so forth, has there been any research to show that those elements are detrimental to the human body, to the stomach, or get we don't Yes. Are there, are there, are there yes. And one interesting one is that since the 50s, the, um, the sperm count has halved. And so they believe the phthalates is responsible for that. And you know, there's quite a lot of sperm out there, but um, in, in 200 years, if we keep drinking out of plastic bottles, you know, we're gonna, it's gonna be very, very difficult to conceive. Wow. But is that the only there's, I'm not an expert, but they, apparently some research came out and said that it causes cancer as well. But if you Google it, you, it'll, it'll give you all the information you need. There are actually quite a few uh, side effects. Um, there are long-term side effects, and the problem is that we've only started um, researching it more recently in the last like 15, 20 years, like more thoroughly. So we don't have those long-term studies to know exactly what the, all the effects are. But as you mentioned, sperm count has been shown to be reduced over time in, in men. Um, there are cancer-causing agents. Certain things end up being carcinogens. Um, and other things that can cause like thyroid imbalance and um, possibly uh, certain brain dysfunctions that's still being investigated. Um, things that can like accelerate Alzheimer's or something like that. Uh, that's still, like I said, being a, that's a kind of a new area of study, but there are a lot of different areas where it can affect the human body, and they're still uh, looking into that to see how bad it can be. What about tap water? When do you tap? Because most um, of us do, many of us do not. I do not drink tap water. <laughs> um, I have a filter at home. Um, it's, what about the filters? What type of filter works? What about the Brita filter? Brita filters are fine. Usually any kind of carbon filter, those, those work well enough. You just have to make sure and change them regularly enough so that they continue to filter properly. Um, you asked earlier about storing water in plastic and whether or not it's okay to drink it. Um, it's not great um, after you know a certain amount of time. What I do in that situation is I use that water for washing and other things rather than, yeah, exactly, that, so I'm not going to ingest it. So that way, you know, you can still use the water, you're not wasting it, but yeah, so that would be a better way to handle that. Thank you. Aluminum and deodorants. Aluminum and deodorants. I'm not an expert on that. Yeah, I know that there is some information out there about aluminum and deodorants that can cause certain problems. Um, I don't know exactly, I don't remember what the what issues they cause. The difference is that the amount of aluminum found in deodorants are much, much higher concentration than what you would be ingesting from the water. Um, and so that way it's not, and it's not affecting you the same way. Ingesting it is affects your body differently than putting it on your skin. Um, so that's, so there is a different way that it affects you and there's a lot more aluminum in certain deodorants than there would be in the water. Don't buy beverages in glass. I know it's impossible, right? But we, you, you, you can't change everything overnight, right? But start talking about it where you can make choices, choose aluminum. Um, you know, we're seeing it. It's, it's, it's working. People are talking about it. Um, but we're all agents of change. But nothing happens overnight. Um, you definitely want to be putting the aluminum into the recycling, for sure. There's a better chance of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. First time I've ever been told this. <laughs> but anyway, that the alternative recyclers, like there's somebody, I think Lady Green, that I've heard of, that recycles and I think has a better like ratio, a different system that is more effective and maybe a better way to get things recycled that are clearly ones that get done. I think separating recyclables is great, but again, there's no recycling plants in the state of Florida. 
So you, none, zero. They're putting it in the landfill, guarantee. Plastic, very little. I mean, so overwhelming. That and the type, and you, there's different types of plastic as well. I mean, can you imagine someone going through the plastic and going, "Oh, there's that type of plastic. And there's that type of plastic." It's just no. You know, it's you've got to make it simple for this to work, and that's why aluminum is a sustainability wonder material. I was thinking about the um, just waters, also a concept of spring water in a compostable. What, what do you think of that? Do you really want to hear? No, it's a it's it's greenwashing. Every single so just water, boxed water, all of those tetra packs that made up of three materials. Cardboard, aluminum, and plastic. So you have to have special machinery to separate the cardboard, the plastic, uh, and the aluminum that's in there. No one does it. Every single one of those tetra packs goes in the landfill. I don't think you want to burn plastic. It's a major, major problem in the Caribbean. It's, it's a major problem here, but also there. We're talking to a number of resorts in the Caribbean right now, and you know, closing the loop. I mean, there's a lot of container space uh, on you know tropical shipping coming back to the states, and so we're talking about utilizing that so something's coming back all the scrap aluminum. Just quickly to add to that, um, we burn trash here too. Um, we had just a few years ago somebody uh, from waste management come and give it one of our citizen science talks and it was a good talk I mean you know she explained a lot of what they tried to do here um, it was a, a little self-serving because she described you know all this leftover trash that they would have that you know wasn't whatever reused or whatever they were you know recycling supposedly um, but she said that they burn it and the quote steam that comes off of the burning garbage was used to produce energy. And it was all I could do to keep my mouth shut, because I'm like, if you burn plastic and get steam, then you are apparently a god. There's, you know, there's no way that you can turn trash into water. I mean, you know, it was, it was really interesting. But yeah, I mean, we do that here too, unfortunately, because you know a lot of our landfills are full, and it is a way to produce energy, but it also releases an enormous amount of pollutants into the atmosphere, along with you know, greenhouse gases. Alrighty, well, thank you everybody for your time. And uh, yeah, we love it here at Yuba Have a great day.